Let me tell you a story about two best friends, Katie and Sloan, who are very different from each other. Katie likes following rules and being organized, while Sloan enjoys taking risks. They are both very excited about their upcoming trip out of town. They plan to work at a place called Eco Field Organic Farms for a whole month. They want to do this to save money for a shopping trip in New York City. The next morning, Katie's uncle Jason, who is a police officer, picks them up. They will stay at his and his girlfriend's place for the night before going to the farm. As they get comfortable in this new place, Sloan, who often does unexpected things, suggests they should use fake names while they're in town. She chooses the name Heather for herself, and Katie picks Ripley. The next day, Uncle Jason drives them to the bus station. Being a caring uncle, he gives them a smart safety tip. He tells them to choose a secret word and add it to the end of every text message. For today, the secret word is Apple. After giving them this advice, he leaves them at the station. With an hour before their bus arrives, Katie and Sloane go to a local cafe. There, they meet two local guys, Jed and Lucas, who say they are brothers. The four of them end up sitting together. Katie and Sloane tell them their new fake names. Jed and Lucas then offer to drive the girls to the farm. Katie is cautious at first. Safety first. But Sloane convinces her. Finally, Katie agrees, and they both get into the brother's blue truck. As we know, they're getting a ride with Jed and Lucas, who said they would take them to Ecofield Organic Farms where they're supposed to work. But things get strange when Jed drives right past the farm without stopping. When they finally stop, it's not at the farm, but at a house that looks a bit odd. Jed and Lucas's mom greets them. She seems nice and invites them in for some tea. Even though they feel a bit unsure, Katie and Sloane go inside. Inside, they have some pie and drink the tea, which, looking back, wasn't a good choice. Soon, everything becomes blurry. It turns out, there was something in that tea. Realizing something is wrong, they try to leave, but it's too late. Jed and Lucas catch them and knock them out. When they wake up, they find themselves chained in the middle of the woods. Jed tells them this is their new home and leaves them with just the basics. Some clothes, a simple bed, and a toilet. As they try to get used to their tough new reality, things get worse. Jed's boss, Boris, shows up. He takes Katie's phone to check for any hints about their situation. He finds out that they lied about their names and the safe word Katie used in her last text. Under pressure, they admit that Apple was a secret word for safety. Just when they thought things couldn't get worse, the local sheriff arrives, but instead of helping them, he shows he's part of this awful situation. After the sheriff leaves, a crushed Sloan goes to comfort Katie. Meanwhile, back in town, Uncle Jason is getting more worried. He notices that Katie's texts keep using the same safe word, Apple, which isn't supposed to happen. Something's definitely wrong. In a dark and hidden part of the woods, Jed and Lucas are now meeting with another suspicious person, who we'll call the Scruffy Guy. This man takes Sloane and brings her into a trailer. It's obvious from the way he acts that he's not a good person. Meanwhile, back in the city, the girl's uncle, who is actually a secret FBI agent, is figuring things out. He calls the farm where Katie and Sloane were supposed to work and learns they never arrived. Worried, he hurries to find them. Back in the woods, things are getting even scarier for Sloan and Katie. The next person, wearing a creepy pig mask, arrives and takes Sloan inside the trailer. When he leaves, Sloan is very upset, and now it's Katie's turn to comfort her. The situation gets more intense as Uncle Jason, the FBI agent, arrives at the sheriff's office. He confronts the town sheriff, who we already know is involved in bad things. Uncle Jason shares his concerns about his niece being kidnapped, mentioning that the repeated use of the safe word in Katie's texts is a warning sign. Back in the woods, the dishonest sheriff tells the kidnappers about Uncle Jason's real job and the concerns about the safe word. Boris, the boss, tells Jed to kill both Katie and Sloane to stop any FBI involvement in their crimes. What they don't know is that Katie overhears their dangerous plan. Eager to solve this, Uncle Jason goes to the cafe where he last saw the girls. He talks to the barista, who clearly remembers the truck Jed and Lucas were driving. The next day brings a scary discovery. Katie whispers to Sloane that the kidnappers plan to kill them soon. Just then, 
The kidnappers arrive with the scruffy guy, leaving him to watch them. Katie, taking a desperate chance, gets close to him and, in a shocking move, uses her teeth to bite his throat. The women quickly free themselves from the chains. As they're escaping, the sheriff arrives, probably to finish the job himself. But before he can get out of his car, Katie and Sloane steal it, driving away to safety. They rush back to town and go straight to the hardware store to prepare for what comes next. They're not running away anymore. At the hardware store, they ask the cashier about Boris, the boss behind all this, who drives a blue truck. Luckily, the cashier knows exactly where he lives. Meanwhile, Uncle Jason, who's an FBI agent, is also figuring things out. He visits the local car insurance office, pretending he needs information about a blue truck involved in an accident. Back at Boris' house, he's just arrived home when Katie and Sloan attack him with nail-spiked tennis balls, seriously injuring him. Now, Boris is begging for his life, offering them money to let him go. Just then, Uncle Jason arrives at Boris' house. Inside, Katie and Sloan demand Boris tell them the identity of the man with the pig mask. When Boris refuses, they take extreme actions and use a homemade spear on him, leading to his end. When Uncle Jason enters the house, he finds it empty except for a badly hurt Boris. As he looks around, he hears car engines outside. Rushing out, he sees Katie and Sloane driving away. With no time to lose, he takes Boris to the hospital for emergency care. In the next scene, the sheriff tells Uncle Jason that Boris didn't make it. Worried and eager to reach Katie, Uncle Jason tries to call her phone. Just then, he realizes something is very wrong. The sheriff, now exposed, pulls out his gun. Meanwhile, Katie and Sloan stop in front of a church. Here, a shocking truth comes out. The man behind the pig mask is the town's priest. Inside the church, Sloan confronts this man, her attacker. With Katie by her side, the two friends bravely defeat their enemy. As they drive away from the church, Katie and Sloan find a moment of calm. However, when they stop and get out of the car, a shocking sight awaits. The priest, chained to the back of their truck. In a final act of revenge, they pour gasoline on him and set him on fire before driving away. Back in town, the situation gets worse as Uncle Jason is captured by the sheriff, who has also taken two more young women. Just in time, Katie and Sloane arrive to save the day. They tie up the sheriff and, in a tense moment, make him play Russian roulette. It's clear that the ordeal has changed them. They now show a surprising toughness. As the sheriff begs for mercy, saying he's sorry, Katie deals a final deadly blow to his head. After their brave rescue, Katie and Sloane free the captured women and tell them to untie Uncle Jason. Thankful for being set free, the women stay quiet when Jason asks who killed the sheriff, not wanting to give away their rescuers. Next, Katie and Sloane go to the house of Jed and Lucas's mother, looking for payback. They turn the situation around by drugging her, just like she had done to them. They then tie her up and take her to the basement, where they find Jed already tied up and gagged. In a harsh twist, they beat Jed with baseball bats, making his mother watch. The revenge doesn't stop there. They bring her to Lucas, who is also tied to a chair. Instead of hurting him themselves, they give him a scary choice. Hit his own mother with a bat. When Lucas refuses, they shoot him. They then set up the scene to make it look like Lucas did it to himself, planning to blame all the bad things on him. In a last effort to save herself, Lucas's mother tries to offer money for her life, but her pleas are ignored, and Katie ends her life using a lawn mower in a harsh act of revenge. As things calm down, some time passes. Uncle Jason comes to Katie's house to drive her and Sloane to the airport. The story ends with Katie and Sloane going to New York City, leaving their dark past behind. The movie Even Lambs Have Teeth ends with the two women finally free to follow their dreams.